Welcome back. In this video, we are going to solve problem 12-46 that is taken from chapter number 12, Deflection of Beam and Shaft. And the book name is Mechanics of Material by R.C. Hibbler. So statement is determine the slope of shaft at the bearing at A and B. The shaft is made up of steel and having diameter 30 mm. The bearing at A and B exert only vertical reaction on the shaft. E of st this shaft is 200 gigapascal. So this is a shaft having support at A and B by using a bearing that exert only vertical reaction force and the load at point C, D and E of the pulley is shown over here. So due to this loading, the shaft will bend like this. So what we have to find, we have to find the slope at A and slope at B. What is slope? So tangent to this curve will define the slope clear so we have to find this slope at a and b so let's start with the solution so first step will be if we remove this uh, bearing at point a so you will be having a reaction force let this is r a and if you remove this bearing at point b so you will be having a reaction force that is represented by r b so we'll find r a and r b by using equation of equilibrium so first equation of equilibrium that sum of all moments about point b is equal to zero and taking the counterclockwise moment as positive. So about point B, first moment will be this 150 into perpendicular distance, which is 250 millimeter, and in meter it is 0 0.250 meter. And this is producing counterclockwise moment, it will be positive. The second moment that will be produced due to this 60 Newton force and perpendicular distance is now 500 millimeter which is equal to 0 0.500 and this is also producing counterclockwise so it will be positive. The third moment will be this one and perpendicular distance is 0 0.750 meter and this is also counterclockwise so it will be positive. And the last moment due to RA into perpendicular distance is now 1000 millimeter or it is 1 meter and this is producing clockwise so it will be negative. And the sum of all these moments about point B will be 0. So I will write 150 into perpendicular distance is 0 0.250 plus 60 into 500 which is 0 0.500 meter plus 150 into 0 0.750 meter and minus Ra into 1 is equal to 0. So when you calculate it, you will get Ra will be equal to 180 Newton. So this is your Ra, we can find Rb as well by using this equation of equilibrium that sum of all forces along y direction must be equal to zero and upward force is taken as positive. So Ra is upward, so 180, this force is downward, so minus 150, this force is downward which is minus 60 minus this force which is 150 plus Rb is equal to 0. So from here you will get 150, 150 so 180 minus 360 plus Rb is equal to 0. So it means that Rb is equal to Rb is equal to 180 Newton. Now we have Ra and Rb, so we will move toward finding the equation of elastic curve that can be obtained by using this equation Ei into d square v over dx square is equal to moment. And this moment can be, m can be obtained by using Macaulay's method or singularity functions. So we will find this m as well. So I will write the m moment. Now you can see all the loadings are point loads at A, C, D and E and there is a table that is shown for the point load that is serial number 2. So for point load the movement function is defined by this equation and this point P is upward so it will be positive and this is acting at a distance of A and X start from this distance. 
so we'll start for r a so for r a a is equal to 0 and x is starting from this point so i will write since force is upward so i will write r a which is equal to 180 into x minus a a is 0 so x minus 0 and the second force is 150 newton that is downward so i will write minus 150 into x minus uh, a will be 250 millimeter which is 0 0.25 meter the third force is 60 newton so it will be minus 60 into x minus 0 0.5 and the other force is 150 so minus 150 into x minus 0 0.75 and we will neglect the force on the right hand side so this is your moment equation now let this is your equation number a so put value of m in equation number a so what we will get is that ei into y ei into d square v over dx square will be equal to 180 into x minus 150 into x minus 0 0.25 minus 60 into x minus 0 0.5 minus 150 into x minus 0 0.75 so integrate this equation what we will get we will get ei into dv over dx will be equal to 180 square 180 x square over 2 minus 150 into x minus 0 0.25 square divided by 2 minus 60 into x minus 0 0.5 square divided by 2 minus 150 into x minus 0 0.75 square divided by 2 plus there will be a constant of integration which is c1 so this will be equal to ei into dv over dx will be equal to 90x square minus 75 into x minus 0 0.25 square minus 30 into x minus 0 0.5 square minus 75 into x minus 0 0.75 square plus c1 let this is your equation number one so what we will do is that integrate equation number one so you will get ei into v will be equal to 90 x cube over 3 minus 75 into x minus 0 0.25 whole cube over 3 minus 30 into x minus 0 0.5 whole cube over 3 minus 75 into x minus 0 0.75 whole cube divided by 3 plus c1 x plus c2 and if you further simplify it you will get ei into v is equal to 30 x cube minus 25 into x minus 0 0.25 whole cube minus 10 into x minus 0 0.5 whole cube minus 25 into x minus 0 0.75 whole cube plus c1 x plus c2 and this is your equation number two now we can find c1 and c2 by using boundary condition so i will write boundary conditions for that so first boundary condition is that at x is equal to zero we have v deflection is equal to zero so let me show you over here x is equal to zero we have deflection is equal to zero so what we will do is that we will put in equation number two because equation number two is for deflection so here ei into 
zero is equal to zero and you can see that this term will be zero because x is equal to zero this will be minus 0 0.25 and anything inside macaulay bracket that is negative will be zero so this will be zero this will be zero and c1 into zero will be zero and only left with c2 so that is equal to c2 so from here you can say that c2 is equal to zero now we will use another boundary condition and what is that so at x is equal to one meter we have deflection is equal to zero so here x is equal to 1000 millimeter or one millimeter so here you have deflection is equal to zero because at point b we have a bearing support so put in equation two that is about deflection so e i into e i into zero is equal to 30 into one cube minus 25 into one minus 0 0.25 whole cube minus 10 into one minus 0 0.5 whole cube minus 25 into one minus 0 0.75 whole cube plus c1 which is c1 into 1 and c2 is equal to 0 so you will get 0 will be equal to 30 minus 10.55 minus 1.25 minus 0 0.39 plus c1 so here if you calculate it you will get c1 will be equal to minus 17.8125 Now you have C1 and C2, so put value of C1 and C2 in equation number 1. Why equation number 1? Because equation number 1 define the slope and we have been asked to find the slope at point A and B. So we will put it in equation number 1, so we will get EI into dv over dx which is equal to slope and that is 90 into x square minus 75 into x minus 0 0.25 whole square minus 30 into x minus 0 0.5 square minus 75 into x minus 0 0.75 and c1 is minus 17.8125 and when you divide EI on both sides, so you will get dV over dx that is equal to slope and that will be equal to 1 over E times I into 90x square minus 75 into x minus 0 0.25 whole square minus 30 into x minus 0 0.5 square minus 75 into x minus 0 0.75 and minus 17.8125 now slope at a is not known and this slope is at x is equal to 0 so here you can see that x is equal to 0 we have to find slope at point a so what we will do we will put x is equal to 0 in this equation so put let this equation is equation number b so put x is equal to 0 in equation b so you will get a slope at x is equal to 0 will be equal to theta a and that will be equal to 1 over e into i and 90 0 square minus 75 into 0 minus 0 0.25 square minus 30 into 0 minus 0 0.5 square minus 75 into 0 minus 0 0.75 square this is square let me check it this is square okay minus 17.8125 so this value will be 0 
this will be also 0 because minus 0 0.25 inside the Macaulay bracket is 0 this will be 0 this will be 0 and we will left with equal to theta a will be equal to minus 17.8125 divided by e into i minus 17.8125 e is given as 200 gigapascal so 200 into 10 to the power 9 let me show you over here e is 200 and radius uh, is of this shaft is 0 0.015 so i for circular shaft is pi by 4 r power 4 so pi by 4 r is 0 0.015 power 4 so again when you calculate it you will get this will be equal to minus 0 0.00224 radian and we know that 2 pi radian is equal to 360 degree so 1 radian is equal to 360 divided by 2 pi is again equal to 180 divided by pi so multiply this uh, 0 0.0 theta a will be equal to minus 0 0.00224 into 180 degree divided by pi and that will be equal to minus 0 0.128 degree so this is the slope at point a next slope at point b which is equal to theta b and theta b is at x is equal to 1 meter so here you can see theta x is equal to 1 theta b will be so put the value in put in equation b so i will write it theta b is equal to 1 over e into i into 90 into 1 square minus 75 into x minus x is 1 1 minus 0 0.25 square minus 30 into 1 minus 0 0.5 square minus 75 into x uh, x is 1 into 1 minus 0 0.75 whole square minus 17.18 uh, 1825 and when you put the value that will give you 17.8125 17.1825 divided by ei so e is 200 gigapascal 200 into 10 to the power 9 multiply by i is pi by 4 r power 4 which is 0 0.015 power 4 so again when you calculate it it will be equal to plus 0 0.00224 radian and you can say that if you want to convert it into degree so you have to multiply it with 180 by pi so you will get uh, the angle will be equal to 0 0.128 degree so this is plus value and this is minus so this minus mean this is clockwise I will write clockwise and this will be counterclockwise direction so if I show you over here let this is the angle so this angle will be equal to this will be equal to theta a that is minus 0 0.128 degree clockwise and this one will be this one will be counterclockwise will be theta b and that is 0 0.128 and that was all about this problem 12-46 i hope you have enjoyed this video and you have learned from it those who are new to my channel then subscribe it and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you can get notification about my latest videos if you have any question you can ask me in comment section Thank you for watching.